We're doing it. It's happening. It's official. We're ditching the stove. Hey, that's easy. In 2019, we ditched our propane stove because we had only used it a handful of times in over three years of living aboard. And even when we first bought Curiosity, we were gonna rip it all out and go all electric right then. But we got huge pushback from the sailors around us saying, don't do that, that'd be a huge mistake. What if you have an electrical problem? And plus that's a great Force 10 oven. You're gonna love that thing. Well, <laughs> I didn't, I actually hated that thing. I thought it was terrible. No offense, Force 10. I also didn't wanna be cavalier about it all because we were brand new to sailing and I thought, well, I don't know, what if they are right? And so we carried that thing around through seven countries and never used it. Finally rid of it. We've been all electric for quite some time, yet I haven't actually talked about it. And I get asked about the oven quite frequently. That's what we're gonna talk about today. My all electric, off-grid, solar-powered kitchen. Cause it is, well, lithium, solar powered. Anyway, we're gonna get to that. But first I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea because it is gray and drizzly outside and it feels very British and like the right thing to do. So grab a beverage, meet back here. I am gonna give you a tour of our kitchen, but first, I wanted to talk a little bit about our history because we have been living off the grid for over 10 years now. And when we started, it was in a 1985 pop-up Volkswagen camper van. It had a propane powered fridge and stovetop. Neither one ever really worked very well. So we upgraded to an RV and lots of modifications and upgrades later. We had full lithium batteries, a huge solar array, residential refrigerator, and all electric cooking in the kitchen. It was a fantastic setup. So naturally when we moved on to the boat, that's why we were like, oh, throw some extra solar panels on the top, upgrade the battery bank, rip it all this stuff, we're going all electric. And then we got that push back and it scared us. And we thought, oh, maybe we don't know something about the sailing lifestyle that's different. So we left the propane stove in and me, you know. So let's talk about why I hate propane. First, because of the heat. When you start using an open flame, it just gets so hot so fast. Naturally, you want to open a window. Ah, uh, you can't do that because then the breeze blows your flame out. Then you've got propane running, but with no flame, which becomes a safety hazard. On top of all of that, then you have to refill the propane. And refilling propane can be a real pain in the arse because as you travel from country to country, the propane fittings change, just like your electrical outlets change. And if you don't have the correct adapter, you can't fill your tank. Now you're running around searching for an adapter. And once you find it, you gotta find the propane. You get to places like French Polynesia, it's hard to find propane because they use mostly butane. But if you put butane in a propane tank, it burns really smoky and you end up with black soot all over the place. Now, luckily we didn't really have those issues because we use our electrical devices. We never really used the stove, but man, did we watch our friends struggle with it. <sighs> okay. Sorry for the interruption guys. There's a break in the rain and my super high tech rain capture system starting to overflow. Well, I fill up the tank, I wanna tell you about a winner. Remember that Omaze giveaway of the Sprinter van we shared back in October? Well, this happy dude won it. So congrats, Lars. And you should definitely keep watching this video because, well, going all electric in the galley would be one of our top van life upgrades. So Lars gets the van and your donations help Access Fund restore 190 miles of trails. And it was such a success that Access Fund and Omaze are doing it again. Whoop, 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 whoop. No, get in there. <laughs> so the prize is a four x four Mercedes Benz Sprinter van with $80,000 worth of customizations by Vansmith. You can have the van delivered directly to you or you can be flown out to Vansmith HQ to pick it up yourself, which is totally what I would do because you might be able to catch the last bit of powder for a little spring snowboarding session. A Basin's only an hour and a half away. Sounds like the perfect van trip to me. The best part is every donation supports the Charity Access Fund. Their mission is to protect public lands, restore climbing areas, and repair impacted trails. 
So click over to amaze.com slash GWTW to support Access Fund and to enter for a chance to win that sweet 4x4 custom Mercedes Sprinter van. All right, back to the galley. Kitchen tour. You ready for this? All right, induction cooktop, electric oven, grill, sink. Yeah, I think that concludes the door. <laughs> Just kidding. This is a tiny kitchen though, so you know, I can't fit everything in this one space. We have several different electric devices, including our bread maker, the yogurt maker, and of course, the most important device on this boat by far is the ice cream maker. That was a new addition. I will make sure that you see that in action in the upcoming episode. But the important stuff, right? Oh, because we also have the coffee and smoothie bar area. <laughs> Living dangerously. Whee! You bar over while I had to win. Pounding. <laughs> Nothing like a little pour over and a beat. And yeah, and that, that's really about it. That's all we have. Fridge freezer. Fridge freezer, which we'll get to that because that's a whole thing. Um, but I want to start with the things that pull the most power that we use the most often. Induction, oven, grill. That's probably the order of how I use them most. So I'll start here with the induction cooktop. It is super efficient, works really well, and I kind of like having the portable unit. I don't know that I'll ever go with like a properly installed one. Reason being, sometimes I like to cook outside when we have a lot of people on board of this. If we've had seven or eight staying with us whenever we've got family. It's, <laughs> you can really pack it in on a boat if you want to. When we have a lot of people, I like to separate it out. So maybe somebody's out there cooking, somebody's in here. It spreads us out. We can do a lot more all at one time and cook for a lot of people more efficiently. Also, if you have any issues with it, this is just easier to replace. And it's just painfully cheap. This is a great unit for what it is and it works like a champ. So I have no complaints with it, except that I really need to get, I don't know what they call it, like the sea bars or the clamp when we finally get somewhere with the marine store where I can buy things again. Gotta get one of those because I cannot use this right now while we're underway. I can, but I have to be right here with it. I can't walk away, I can't turn my back. I really have to be right here on it. It's fine when we're at anchor, but if we were at sea, I can't really use this very well. That's whenever I turn to the grill. And that's when the grill gets a lot of use, but also just because the grill is fantastic for fish, making tortillas, grilling up vegetables, lots of different uses of it. Pancakes, hello, important things. It does actually have the reversible plate, so it leaves the nice grill marks, great for searing. So I don't feel the need for charcoal, wood, propane, all this, none of which really work that great on a boat anyway. So I think this is the way to go. I don't miss having a real, real grill. That's hard to say, real grill. <laughs> the oven. I've wanted this for a long time and I've had it, I guess, what, two and a half years or whatever now and just don't have any regrets. It's highly rated. It is not your average toaster oven. Super smart, incredibly efficient, bakes really evenly. I just, no complaints. I love it. And this is not a commercial, but you should be sponsoring me. <laughs> I feel I should be sponsored. I love it that much. Aside from that, let's see. What else do we need to go into? Anything? Am I missing anything, love? No. We've talked about our water purification before. You can find a video on that. I'll make sure there's a link or card or something. Otherwise, I feel like we need to move on to refrigeration because that's really the other big component in this kitchen. All right, so this is supposed to be our fridge and freezer but it hasn't worked for a couple of years. So we've always fought with this fridge, but now it's officially dead. There's some sort of goo at the bottom that's kind of oily. The past two days, it's gone from like 40 degrees to 50 to, what did I say? 60 and 65 60.1, 65, that's not safe. We're gonna die. We're gonna <laughs> this fridge is going to kill us. And even before it died, we would have to defrost the whole thing every two to three weeks, and the cold plates would struggle to actually freeze anything. Okay, starting with the freezer, there's some butter at 45, 46 degrees. Let's see, those are some tamales. Those are at 42 degrees, which would be refrigeration. Uh, let's see here, the ice. Hey, 34 degrees. <laughs> Barely frozen. And they really don't save you a lot on power. We've been using a 12 volt fridge and freezer that we've kept out in the cockpit and it's not perfect, but they absolutely get the job done and we're really glad 
that we have them. But as soon as we can get to a mainland where we can tackle this project, we're going to fix it. So we're gonna ditch this whole cold plate system and go with a totally different type of refrigeration. We have spent a lot of time on the forums and there's been a lot of people that have done this, including our friends on SV Holiday, which have our sister boats, the same exact setup. Are you telling me you are not guaranteeing me whales today? I'm not guaranteeing you whales today. I'm on the wrong boat. <laughs> CJ found one that fits almost perfectly in this same exact footprint. So he ripped these out, put in those residential style refrigerators and has absolutely loved it. So that kind of sealed the deal for us. We already got another friend who did it. Great reviews. I think that's the direction we're gonna go. That is all the major appliances on our boat that make up our kitchen. Of course, there's a bunch of little stuff that I kind of touched on earlier, but I've got a full blog post that lists out each one of those for a lot more information. If that's what you're interested in, you can check out the link in the description. But the big question is now, how do we power all of these appliances? Well, we have 1200 amp hours of lithium power. And from our experience, lithium is kind of the only way to go. We've been living with lithium for well over seven years. I don't even know exactly the number. There's no way we could go back. It's just so much more efficient. It can handle the high draw of things like an oven and a grill or a griddle induction that lead acid or AGM is just, just gonna crap out too soon on us. So the lithium is definitely the way to go. Then of course, how do we regenerate that power? We have 1400 watts of solar panels. And I would say for the way that we use power, that is the absolute minimum because we do just fine because we have no other form of regeneration right now. We don't have a generator, kind of crapped out on us. The generator's not working. The starter's poked. We have no freaking idea what happened. So we're just down to the solar. We're good, but if we get five or six days like this in a row where it's full cloud and rain, not really any sun coming in, we're really waiting for that sunny day to come around going, oh, batteries are getting uncomfortably low. So bare minimum, we need another form of regeneration. We just haven't decided what that's gonna be because we're not totally sold on buying another generator. We're kind of wondering if we should maybe go with hydro or wind at this point, just not sure. So that's kind of where you come in. I would love to know, you know, what do you have on your vessel if you have one? If you've been doing a lot of research, have you discovered something that we would probably like to know about because we are always on the hunt for better alternatives. So if you've got something good and juicy, let me know about it in the comment section down below. If I have missed something you want to know about, definitely let me know that down in the comments below too. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for making it this far in the video. Hopefully you found this helpful and we will see you again next week. Thanks so much. Bye. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, A lot of information about a tiny kitchen. Oh my gosh. <laughs>